guys, my name is Danny. If you are new here, welcome, hello. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're coming back, hello. If you've been watching my videos for a while, I'm sure that the intro to this video was a little bit different than what I normally do, but I'm just trying to, you know, get creative, have a good time. And I thought that you guys would want to hear me telling my boy stories, just because I've liked a lot of boys in my life and I have had some pretty interesting stories. So I thought I would just sit down and tell you guys the stories. I thought I would call it to all the boys I've loved before just because like in that movie she like is obviously writing letters to her past loves or like maybe not past loves but whatever. She's like talking about all the boys she's liked and so I thought it like related. I don't know. Whatever guys. I'm just trying to be cute. This room is very echoey and it's making me extremely uncomfortable. I feel like I'm like talking to myself as I'm talking to the camera because I'm like hearing my words bounce back. I'm just gonna start from when I was a child and like talk about my like main crushes up until I got married I guess. That's that's it. We're just gonna start there. So the first actual boy that I liked his name was Ryan. Yes, I'm gonna be naming all of them in this video because why the hell not? And he was actually my best friend's brother. You guys ever heard that song on Victorious? B-F-B, what? Yeah, that one, that was me. I literally used to listen to that song all the time, like thinking about him. So I met him at his family's Super Bowl party when I was 10 and he was 15. Me and my sister, Lauren, she's two years older than me. We met him at the same time and we took an interest in him at the same time. Like we both thought he was cute. Now, Lauren obviously had a leg up on me because she was older, she was closer to his age and she was cooler than I was, you know, at that time. Obviously, I'm way cooler now. And so we became friends with his sister after we met them at that Super Bowl party. They were actually our neighbors. And because we were friends with his sister, we would always go over to their house to hang out. And I was like head over heels for this boy, okay? And we didn't really talk that much. I was definitely not like, you know, a 15 year old's dream girl because I was a child. So we would always hang out with their family and I was always trying to get his attention, but he never paid attention to me. So uh, I was sad. And I cried a lot about it and I was like, why doesn't he like me? He doesn't know me. He doesn't pay attention to me He always wants to hang out with my sister because he would always talk to her and like she would hang out with my older brother Who was friends with him and him together So like they were this little trio of friends and I was just left to hang out with my friend who I should have just hung out with her Because she was my friend and she's like still my best friend But at the time I didn't care about her. I just wanted to hang out with her brother So <laughs> that went on for about a year of just like me trying to get him to pay attention to me and he totally did not he shouldn't have, I was a child, but whatever. And then we started messaging him on Facebook. Lauren, my sister, used to message him on Facebook all the time. And I would message him on Facebook all the time as well. It wasn't like we could text people at the time, we didn't have cell phones. So my sister would message him and then she would write in her journal about her messaging him. And then I would read her journal because I always read my sister's journal. And one time I read that she messaged him on Facebook and she was like, hey, would you consider us friends? And he said to her, yeah, of course. And I read that in her journal and I was like, oh my God, he likes her. Of course he likes her. And I remember writing a whole journal entry and I was like, why does he like her? Why doesn't he like me? And so I messaged him on Facebook and I said, hey, would you consider us friends? <laughs> I literally said the exact same thing that my sister said to him. And his response was, uh, yeah, I guess. Oh my God. And I was like, I was, again, so sad. I cried. I wrote in my journal. I was like, all he said was, yeah, I guess. Okay, whatever. So then we were moving from Northern California to Southern California, which was eight hours away. So in my 10 year old mind, I was like, oh my God, it's the last time I'm ever gonna see him. I need to tell him I like him. I don't know what that was gonna do for me, but I wanted to. So we had a going away party. And at this going away party, I wrote him a letter and I was like, I like you. I don't remember what I said. I wish I still had it, but I essentially just went on and on about how much I liked him. I'm sure if I actually gave it to him, he probably would have been nice to me because again, I was a child and he was a teenager. So like he probably saw me as like a little kid. And I don't remember how, cause this was so long ago, but somebody told my sister's friend. My sister's best friend, who was so mean to me, she came up to me at our going away party the night that I was gonna give him this letter. And I had it, like I was holding it, I was walking around with it, like I was ready to give it to him. And she came up to me and she's like, Oh my God, you're gonna give him that letter? That is so pathetic. All I remember is that she said it was pathetic that I was gonna give him a letter saying that I liked him when I was 10. Here's a picture of me at the party. 
It's just so you have a visual. And so I run in the house and I'm crying in the dark and I was so sad and I was like, fine, I won't give him a letter. So I didn't. And then I liked him for four years after that. So <laughs> that didn't end even though I moved. I still liked him. His family still came to visit me. Um, I'm still really close friends with his sister. That was the first like real crush that I had. And honestly, that kind of just sets the tone for the rest of my crushes. So I'm gonna move on. I'm gonna close that chapter. Okay guys, this one was legitimately a figment of my imagination. So one time at a Halloween party, I was like, 13 I want to say and I met this kid and I spoke to him for like three minutes He was in high school. I didn't know how old he was, but he was older and I talked to him and that was it And then one day I'm driving in Malibu I'm not driving because I can't drive him in the back seat and I see the kid and I'm like, oh, there's that kid And then I look again and I see there's another one of him and I'm like, who is that? There's two of them there's twins and they were very attractive, okay? They were beautiful, blonde, beachy boys. My 13 year old ass was like, who, who is that? Immediately, I start having a crush on him, on the twin. Hadn't spoken to him, literally never spoken to him in my entire life, guys. I'm not exaggerating. I did not speak to him. I saw him in passing, saw him when I was driving. So somehow I figure out his name. I don't know how. I find him on Facebook. I find out that he has siblings and somehow I find out eventually where their neighborhood is and the only places I ever see him are the grocery store and the pizza place, like this little shopping center that is in Malibu. And so I used to find any excuse that I could possibly find to go to those places. It didn't make any sense. There's no reason for me to go into the grocery store. I was a child, but I would get my sisters to go and we would go and we would sit and read magazines at the grocery store just because we had nothing else to do. So we go, oh my God, I just remember the salad that they had at the grocery store. <gasps> Anyway, I would find any excuse I could to be at the grocery store just to get a chance to see him. And like every 20 minutes or so at the grocery store, I would get up and walk the store to see if he was there. And sometimes I saw him, guys. It wasn't like completely outlandish. Like I did see him at the grocery store. I don't know why he spent a lot of time there. I guess it was a very small town, so he did. But I started going on bike rides in his neighborhood, riding past his house on my bike, on my skateboard. Like any chance that I could, I would try and go by his house. I found out where he worked, which was at a pizza place. And I started going to the pizza place anytime that I could just hanging out. And this went on for like a year or so before he started to recognize me. Like he started to see see me out all the time so he like knew me from like being out but like he didn't know me but like he knew who I was because I think every time he saw me I saw him and stared at him and smiled at him so like he recognized me so one time I saw him at the grocery store and I'm about to buy something right and he gets in the checkout line right behind me and I'm like I'm like panicking because my crush is right behind me my crush who I've never spoken to is right behind me so we're like chilling, you know, in line. And he goes, do I know you from somewhere? And I was like, um, I think I've seen you around or something like that. But we kind of like talked for a second and that was it, I left. And I was losing it. I was freaking out that I'd finally talked to him for like 10 seconds. I ended up calling his work, asking when he worked, when he delivered pizzas. That was super creepy, but I wasn't really thinking about it because I was a kid, so. That was that. It went on for a couple years. I moved, I got over it, forgot about him. I realized I was being absolutely out of my mind. That was just one of the many things of my childhood where I just made things up in my brain. We're starting to get to like the logical part of my life where I started talking to boys who actually liked me and I stopped making things up. So that's good to get out of this phase because it truly gives me the heebie-jeebies to think about the fact that I I've already told on the internet. So if you want to see this again or like a more in-depth version, maybe there's a video out there somewhere, but I'm just going to tell the story briefly of a guy named Jonah. I'm naming these names because it's really not a big deal anymore. This is like five years ago and this story, like everyone like kind of knows who this is. So it doesn't really matter. Guys, I met a guy named Jonah at a fair and we met because we were both performing at Digifest, which is like kind of like VidCon, but like smaller. So we met there and he instantly was like super flirtatious with me. He clearly liked me. He thought I was cute, whatever. And I was flattered because guys, 
At this point, I'm like 14 or 15. This is like a couple years after I was legitimately making up boys in my brain to have interaction with in my brain. This was like a real boy talking to me. I think this was probably the first boy to like actually take an interest in me as a person and like speak to me. So he's like really flirtatious with me. He's talking to me the whole night that we're performing and he's performing and whatever. And then that night at the festival, then all the creators were like staying in the same hotel and he lived in the area. So he was able to come to the hotel and like talk to me afterwards so we sat in the lobby of the hotel in like the restaurant area for like four hours and we got along super well and it was super magical and i was like oh my god this is so cute i instantly just had the biggest crush on him and like from that day on for the next month we talked every single day on the phone because again he lived in minnesota and i lived in la so we could only talk on the phone i don't know why we didn't facetime i guess i didn't really facetime back then i liked this boy so so much guys i was crazy about him you guys remember the days where like you would subtweet each other i don't know if you guys did this but like when you liked someone back in the day then you would tweet like wish i was with you and then they would tweet like wish i was with you and it was like <gasps> it was just like a thing where people like subtweet each other back and forth and you like favored each other's subtweets and like that's how you kind of know they're talking about you basically i found out that he was talking to a lot of girls at the same time as me and it just shattered my little heart. I was so sad. I was such a little girl who like didn't really know any better. I didn't know any other boys. I never spoke to a guy before. So like to even think that someone would like do that to me at that time was so unthinkable because I hadn't experienced the world. And it was like my first heartbreak and I was listening to like, I'm not the only one by Sam Smith. And I was like, Oh my god, I was so sad. And that took me a while to get over. I was pretty heartbroken about that. But you know what? You live and you learn. I don't blame him. He was a kid too. We were both kids. We're gonna close that chapter and we're gonna move on to some times that were less than ideal. I had had my first kiss. I started like talking to boys in person. When I started going through like a wild phase or whatever, then I started talking to some boys who I probably shouldn't have been talking to. And one of them, this guy, I'm not gonna say his name just because I don't feel like it. So I met this guy at like a little get together and he was very, flirtatious and like direct. You know those guys who clearly are like out on the prowl for a girl at all times and when they talk to you they're like hey, and they like just suck your soul out with the amount of energy that they're giving you. Yeah, so he was like that. He was super attractive to me. I was like, wow, who is this guy? He was kind of like a bad boy. So I was like, ooh, exciting. I'd still only just kissed people at this time, only like two people maybe. So I really wasn't like an experienced lady in any sense of the word. So I was definitely like nervous. Like he was that kind of guy that like scared me, but it was like exciting. <sighs> Just, he always had a girlfriend. He always had someone he was talking to. He was always unavailable. He never actually liked me. I just kind of saw him around like in my friend group or whatever. And every time I did see him, he was very direct with me like that he wanted to um, have me if that is the right word. And I found it very attractive. Uh, looking back, I should have felt pretty degraded by him because he was the kind of guy who just like Snapchats you but like leaves you on red and like would always ask for like pictures, you know? But it wasn't just like those icky guys who ask you for pictures, it was like that attractive guy. So you're like, oh, should I like do, get into this? Like, should I talk to him? Like, should I send him those pictures? Like, he worked at Sonic and he would always ask me to pick him up from work because he didn't drive for a while, I don't know why. And for some reason I found that flattering because it was like, ooh, he likes me, but really he was just like using me for rides, obviously. I mean, obviously he didn't actually like me. And we had this like magical night where I drove him home and we parked outside of his house and he started talking about my life and like listening to my original music and he was like, this is so good. And he like made me send it to him and he was so into me for like an hour and he even like 
went into his house and grabbed a notebook full of poetry that he had written. And guys, he was like the quarterback on the football team. He was like that guy, like that like douchebag who everybody knows and pretty much every girl hates because he's like used them before, but like, you know, everyone knows him. So I did not expect this from him. He was like pulling that card on me, like being emotional and like soft on me. And it just like made me fall so hard. Like from that night on, I was wrapped around that boy's finger. Like he could have called me at four in the morning to go pick him up and like take him to another state. And I totally would have done it. So even though he uh, liked me kind of, I don't know if he actually liked me. I think he liked me as a person, but I don't think he actually liked me like, like that. But he was also like a huge asshole. Like he was also super mean. Like I remember one time then I was at Sonic where he was. I remember I showed up and I was wearing like a cool outfit and like I had makeup on and my extensions were in and my ponytail looked awesome. And he came up to me and he was like, sometimes I see you and I'm like, damn, like she's hot. And then other times I'm like, mm, not so much. Like this guy literally told me that sometimes he finds me really attractive and other times he thinks I'm ugly. I was like, okay. Uh, cool and like I didn't really care at the time I was like sad but of course the next day I just like moved on and I didn't care and it was just like that over and over again for like a year I became like a consistent booty call for him and it was very flattering to me at the time because I thought that he like liked me and cared about me for some reason I don't really know why I guess when a guy hits you up and it's 11 p.m. and he wants you to pick him up from work it's like flattering or something. I really don't know why. Looking back, I'm like, who is she? Why would you ever go for that or agree to do that with anyone? Especially when they treat you like that. But you know what? I didn't know at the time, okay, whatever. So that was like my introduction into like the world of bad boys, I guess you could say. And he was one of a few in like a time period, I guess my like wild phase, which I talked about in one of my other videos. He was one of the few who I like just was completely degraded by. And I guess I degraded him too. Like it was mutual. I definitely did not value people at this time. I didn't value like relationships. I wanted one, but also at the same time, I was doing things that were very degrading to relationships and to like human beings in general. So I don't know guys, he was like my kryptonite, I guess you could say. Anytime he wanted me, I was there and it was just very dehumanizing. So that was like a not a good story. I'm happy that I moved on from that. That's just kind of a depressing story. I just thought I'd mention it. And now that brings me to the last story. <laughs> only guy who was like officially my boyfriend um I've only officially dated one person which is him besides my husband and his name was Austin I met him through friends and instantly I was like I love you who is this he is so cute he was like blonde and tall and he played baseball and he was just like you know that like funny guy like a silly laid back you know those guys who just like have a good happy vibe all the time like he was just like happy and chilling all the time literally the day that i met him we started texting we started talking to each other on the phone a little bit like we started liking each other pretty much instantaneously i remember that i actually asked him to be in my music video like two days later because i needed a guy for a music video and within a couple weeks he was my boyfriend and guys this relationship lasted two weeks it was not serious at all he was definitely um a strange boyfriend because shortly after he asked me to be his girlfriend he kind of just like stopped talking to me like while we were still in a relationship like he didn't break up with me he just like stopped texting me one day like literally two weeks after we started like dating he he stopped talking to me he stopped texting me i remember i called him a couple times and he sounded super high and i was like are you high and he was like no i'm not high of course i'm not high and i was like okay i mean i don't really care if you are i'm just wondering and then he said he was gonna call me later that night and he didn't. And there were like many instances throughout the two weeks where he like said he was gonna call me and he didn't. We lived pretty far away from each other. We lived like 45 minutes apart. So we didn't see each other very much. We only hung out a couple times. We never even really went out in public together. Yeah, I um, basically broke up with him two weeks into the relationship, I said. Uh, I don't really think this is working. You're like not texting me anymore. And I remember I broke up with him on FaceTime and he was playing video games the whole time. And he was like, oh yeah. Like he wasn't even paying attention to me. He was literally playing video games while I was breaking up with him, or I guess while we were breaking up mutually. And I was like, okay, 
I'll see you later. Then he hung up the phone and then I texted him and I was like, dude, we just break up. And he's like, yeah, I guess so. With like a sad face. I was like, dude, you don't sound very sad. Like you weren't even paying attention. So we broke up. It was a very short lived thing. It really wasn't that big of a deal. In my mind it was, I thought I was in love with him. I thought I was in love with all these people. Clearly I was not, but I thought so. So I don't know if you noticed this theme that I have going, but for most of my teenage years, I met someone, I very quickly got attached to them, and then it ended and it took me a really long time to move on. So I liked a lot of guys in my day. Okay guys, I had a lot of little boyfriends. So that was my last official boyfriend before my husband. Okay guys, so that is all of the storytelling that I will be doing for today. I don't know if this was my kind of video, guys. I kind of just wanted to make story times a little bit more creative, so I hope that you guys liked it. If you want to hear any more boy stories, comment below because I will definitely tell some more. I definitely have more. I think I just kind of took the highlights for this video, but if you want to know more, let me know. If you guys aren't subscribed, make sure to subscribe down below and don't miss my videos every Wednesday and Sunday. I upload twice a week. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel with my husband. It's called Danny and Emin. And make sure to subscribe to my husband's channel. It's called games we play actually my husband has two channels make sure to subscribe to his music channel games we play and his personal channel and in gallito he does a cooking show on this channel and he does music on this channel and it's pretty awesome so go subscribe to those channels and i don't really have anything else to say guys if you like a guy and he has a girlfriend don't talk to him if a guy tries to booty call you don't go if a guy tries to use you stop talking to him if a guy says that you're ugly don't talk to him if a guy lies about smoking weed break up with him there's some life lessons to be found in this just you know learn from my mistakes guys have a good day i don't know why i say that in the end of all my videos whatever goodbye everyone <laughs>